DeFi is an open and global financial system designed for the internet age. An alternative to an OPQ, tightly controlled system held together by decades-old technology and practices. It allows you to have control and visibility over your money. It exposes you to global markets and provides alternatives to your local currency or banking options. DeFi devices enable anyone with an internet connection to access financial services, and they're mostly owned and maintained by their customers. So far, tens of billions of dollars in cryptocurrency has passed through DeFi applications, and the amount is growing by the day. Here is how crypto-based decentralized finance works. What is DeFi? DeFi refers to financial products and services that are available to anyone who can use Ethereum. That is, anyone with an internet connection. The marketplaces are always open with DeFi, and there are no centralized authority to stop payments or deny you access to anything. Services that were formerly slow and prone to human mistake are now automatic and safer, thanks to code that anybody can view and evaluate. There is a thriving crypto economy out there where you may lend, borrow, long short, earn interest, and do other things. Argentina's crypto-savvy citizens have utilized DeFi to avoid catastrophic inflation. Companies have begun to webcast their employees' wages in real time. Some people have even taken out and repaid multi-million dollar loans without providing any personal identity. What is Ethereum? Ethereum is the principal network on which developers build decentralized platforms for crypto borrowing, lending, trading, and other activities. Ether is a cryptocurrency, or token, that is used to pay for network operations. Because the Ethereum blockchain is so popular and has enabled the creation of new offers, Ether is widely used, and crypto enthusiasts are thrilled about its value. With a market valuation of more over $460 billion as of early September, it is the second most valuable cryptocurrency after Bitcoin. DeFi versus Traditional Finance Understanding the difficulties that exist today is one of the best ways to see the potential of DeFi. Number 1. Some persons are denied the ability to open a bank account or use financial services. Number 2. People who do not have access to financial services may find it difficult to get work. Number 3. You may be unable to get payment if you use financial services. Number four, your personal data is a hidden cost of financial services. Number five, governments and centralized institutions can shut down markets whenever they want. Number six, trading hours are frequently restricted to business hours in a specific time zone. Number seven, due to internal human processes, money transfers can take days. Number eight, financial services command a premium because intermediary institutions require a cut. Why such high yields? Traditional banks lend out their customers' deposits and pay a portion of the revenue as interest to their customers. Crypto companies use a similar strategy. They pool deposits to make loans and pay interest to depositors. However, banks are obligated by law to maintain reserves to ensure that even if certain loans fail, consumers may still withdraw payments, whereas crypto banks do not have the same reserve requirements and the institutions to whom they lend can make hazardous bets. BlockFi, for example, loans to hedge funds and other institutional investors that take advantage of weaknesses in cryptocurrency markets to make quick money without actually holding dangerous assets, wagering on differences between actual crypto values and crypto futures. When the speculation is successful, it creates returns that help promote larger, riskier consumer yields. What is a stablecoin? Cryptocurrency is extremely volatile, making it unsuitable for transactions such as payments or loans. This is where stablecoins come into play. They are cryptocurrencies that are linked to stable assets, most typically the US dollar. They are intended to give the consistent value of government-issued currency in digital form for blockchain transactions. But they are issued by private businesses. Tether and US dollar coin are two popular dollar-linked tokens. According to the Block or Cryptocurrency website, the number of stablecoins in circulation worldwide has increased from $29 billion in January to $117 billion as of early September. Central bankers control supply and demand and secure adequate reserves to maintain the value of government-issued money. Stablecoin issuers are expected to retain and monitor reserves in the same way. However, there is no certainty that they have the one-to-one dollar backing they claim. Some officials are concerned that a sudden rise in withdrawals would cause one of these assets to collapse, putting consumers, financial firms, and potentially the entire economy at risk. Others argue that a digital currency issued by a central bank would render stablecoin obsolete. A comparison. DeFi. You determine where your money goes and how it's spent. Transfers of funds happen in minutes. Transaction activity is pseudonymous. DeFi is accessible to anyone. Markets are constantly open. And it's founded on transparency. Anyone can look at a product's data and check out the system works. Traditional finance. Companies hold your money. You must trust them not to mismanagement, such as lending to risky borrowers. 
Payments can take days due to manual processes. Financial activity is tightly linked to your identity. You must apply to use financial services. Markets close because employees need breaks and financial institutions are closed books. You cannot ask to see their loan history, a record of their managed assets, and so on. It all began with Bitcoin. In many respects, Bitcoin was the first DeFi application. Bitcoin allows you to truly own and manage wealth, as well as send it anywhere in the globe. It accomplishes this by allowing a large number of people who do not trust one another to agree on a ledger of accounts without the necessity for a trusted middleman. Anyone can use Bitcoin, and no one has the right to change its rule. The rules of Bitcoin, such as its scarcity and openness, are inscribed into the technology. It's not like traditional finance, where governments may issue money, depreciating your funds, and firms can close down marketplaces. What can you do with DeFi? Most financial services have a decentralized alternative. However, Ethereum opens the door to the development of whole new financial products. This is constantly increasing list. Number one, borrow without requiring collateral. Number two, expand your portfolio. Number three, flow money over the world. Number four, purchase insurance. Number five, gain access to stable currencies. Number six, send money all around the world. Number seven, borrow money with collateral. Number eight, begin accumulating cryptocurrency savings. Number nine, your ideas will be funded. Number 10, tokens of exchange. How does DeFi work? DeFi provides services without the use of intermediaries by utilizing cryptocurrencies and smart contracts. In today's financial environment, financial institutions serves as transaction guarantors. Because your money flows through them, this gives these institutions enormous influence. Furthermore, billions of individuals around the world do not have access to a bank account. A smart contract replaces the financial institution in the transaction in DeFi. A smart contract in an Ethereum account that can retain funds and send refund them based on specified criteria. When a smart contract is live, no one can change it. It will always execute its program. A contract meant to provide allowances or pocket money may be programmed to transfer funds from account A to account B every Friday, and will only do so as long as account A has the necessary funds. No one has the authority to alter the contract and add account C as a receiver in order to steal funds. Contracts are also open to the public for inspection and auditing. As a result, defective contracts are frequently scrutinized by the community. This does imply that there is currently a need to trust the more technical members of the Ethereum community who are able to understand code. The open source community helps keep developers in check, but this need will fade as smart contracts become easier to read and other methods of proving code's integrity are developed. Ethereum and DeFi Ethereum is the ideal basis for DeFi for several reasons. Number one, Ethereum provides complete financial freedom. Most goods will never take custody of your assets, allowing you to maintain complete control. Number two, tokens and cryptocurrency are built into Ethereum, a shared ledger. Keeping track of transactions and ownership is something Ethereum does well. Number three, behind the scenes, all DeFi gadgets communicate in the same language. Ethereum, as a result, several of the items work in tandem. You can lend tokens on one platform and trade the interest-bearing token in another market on a completely separate application. This is similar to being able to cash in your reward points at your bank. Number four, no one owns Ethereum or the smart contracts that run on it, allowing everyone to utilize DeFi. This also means that no one may impose new regulations on you. Build DeFi. DeFi is a free and open source movement. You can analyze, fork, and develop on the DeFi protocols and apps. Because of the tiered stack, they all share the same basic blockchain and assets, protocols can be merged and matched to create new combinations. So, what do you think about how crypto-based decentralized finance works? Let us know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.